Like most programming languages, the shell also offers variables. Uh, variables in the shell are mainly of one type, namely text strings. We won't cover here a couple of other types offered by bash as extension, uh, such as arrays. And the purpose of variables is to hold values that you may want to uh, use, as we've seen in uh, parameter substitution. But shell variables can also be handed over to called applications as environment variables. So, and uh, shell variables can also be used to influence the behavior of the shell itself. How do you set a variable? You just write on a line of its own variable equals value. Be careful that there is no white space allowed on either side of the equal sign. <coughs> Um, if you just assign a value to a variable like this, then in the first instance, this is only a shell uh, variable. It's not yet a environment variable. It does not yet get handed over in the environ array to called applications. But you can set for any shell variable an export flag by just writing export and the variable name. And at the same time, when you set this export flag, you can also allocate a value if you want. And <clears throat> then when a command is being called, all the shell variables that have this export flag set for them are being handed over to the application and can uh, read by the application uh, to influence its behavior. It's a sort of an additional or alternative mechanism to hand over uh, parameters and options to an application besides command line arguments. There's also a syntax to hand over an environment variable just to one single command, because if you uh, set a variable and then export it, then that environment variable uh, will apply to all future commands uh, executed in the same a shell session, but sometimes you want to set an environment variable only for a single invocation. And there's this syntax where before the name of the command, uh, you write a sequence of uh, shell variable assignments all separated by space. And then only this command will see these assignments as environment variables. So the complete command call syntax you have uh, command line arguments as a list in the back here and you have at the front here this set of key value pairs to set the environment variables and if you design a command you can choose which of the two mechanisms you want to offer as a way for um, accepting uh, parameters. If you have a terminal open uh, you can um, use the command set to show all the shell variables that are currently defined. <clears throat> you will see if you are in bash also a couple of arrays and you may even see a, a function defined as, as a variable. Uh, and if you only want to see the exported uh, shell variables, the environment variables, there's the built-in shell command printenv. In addition, there is a separate command called env that just outputs all the environment variables that it has uh, received. So you can test how uh, an application uh, receives environment variables this way. Um, what are environment variables and shell variables uh, used for? Um, here a couple of particularly noteworthy examples. I mentioned already the path shell variable, um, which is a colon separated list of all the directories where the shell looks for a binary when you type in a command. So if you type in uh, a command value, it will visit in sequence all these uh, directories here. And the first one that contains an executable file of the same name that file will then be started as the command. It's customary not to include in here the current working directory, uh, which you could include as just a dot. Um, 
and in particular some people put it at the end but in particular you uh, certainly never should put the current working directory at the front why might this be a concern well imagine <clears throat> you are a somewhat sneaky and malicious person and you lure me into your directory and you ask me uh, to look there for some information and then I type in your directory the ls command for example uh, you could have put some malicious software in your directory also called ls and if I had the current working directory in the first in the list of these uh, directories where the shell looks for applications then your version of ls would be executed which I have no control over what it would do because it would then execute with my privileges so for security reasons best don't do this at all or if you must make sure you do it only at the very end a <clears throat> related environment variable is ld library path uh, this is also a colon separated list of directories and this is where the loader looks for shared libraries so on linux in particular it's customary that uh, applications do not get statically linked with uh, the standard C library or many of the other libraries but they are linked at load time with shared libraries such that if you have lots of applications running simultaneously that all share a particular library then they all can use the same library that has already been loaded into memory by the operating system and there are standard paths for looking uh, for shared libraries uh, for example under user lib or slash lib um, but if you have just uh, compiled your own shared library somewhere in your working directory and you want to point the loader uh, to finding it there then you can do this with ld library path uh, this mechanism also has some uh, security problems namely you can use it in order to cause an application to load another shared library than the one it was uh, compiled with so i have successfully used this for example to bypass um, password checks in commercial applications um, or copy protection mechanism license servers um, where i figured out with a debugger that the, uh, the for example 14th invocation of the uh, string comparison function was the one that checked whether I typed in the correct password. So I just uh, offered with LD library path an alternative version of the standard C library where the 14th invocation of the string comparison function always returned true. And then I could bypass this password check this way. So this is one example where application authors uh, who have um, some security concerns may want to be well aware how environment variables not only can be used by themselves to receive options but are also being used by the loader or by the standard libraries that they use to modify the behavior of the application <clears throat> um, one particularly tricky family of environment variables that influence the behavior of the standard library are the so-called locale variables this is the variable lang or a set of variables that all start with lc underscore for, ex for example lc c type defines the uh, character set or lc collate defines how strings uh, should be sorted according to various national rules and <clears throat> lc underscore all can be used to override the settings of these more uh, specific environment variables and the value that you can assign to all of these environment variables is the name of a database entry so the standard c library <coughs> comes with a uh, catalog of um, cultural conventions things like how are numbers formatted how is currency uh, being displayed how should what type of dictionary order should be used what what language is used and 
uh, the conventional names look like this here. You first have a two character ISO code for the language, then an underscore a two character code for the name of the country, and then optionally after dot the character set. So this here stands for English as used in Great Britain with the UTF-8 encoding of Unicode used as the character encoding. And this is the common value that you might assign to the lang uh, environment variable to <coughs> identify the set of cultural conventions that you may want to have. Um, <coughs> if you want to try this out, look at how, for example, the date command outputs the current date and time. And in the British locale, this should use the 24 hour clock. But if you then set either lang or lc underscore c time, if you only want to change the time behavior to the corresponding American locale, then you should see that this suddenly switches to the 12 hour clock with an am or pm suffix. So you can switch for particular um, function areas uh, the locale separately, or you can set or you can override all of these with LC all, or you can set a default for all of these with uh, lang. What I personally do is I set lang to uh, this locale here. However, this locale gives me a sorting order um, where uppercase and lowercase characters are sorted, as you would expect in the uh, in a dictionary sorting order next to each other, but I do prefer the traditional unique sorting order, which just follows the ASCII byte value, which causes then all the uppercase letters to appear before all the lowercase letters, simply because there are some convention to write in directories certain important names like makefile or readme file with a capital letter, so sh they show up at the top, and therefore I set the locale environment variable lc underscore collate, uh, which defines the sorting order uh, to c, which is the traditional behavior specified as a default in, in the c standard. You can also write POSIX here. <clears throat> if you remotely use a Unix machine, um, you may want to uh, control how local time is uh, represented because you may not be interested in the local time of the uh, machine at its location, but in your local time. And there's an environment variable tz that you can use to specify the time zone. The Unix kernel doesn't know anything about local time. It runs in uh, Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Time, Coordinated Universal Time, as it's called today, the uh, local time on the uh, prime meridian. Um, <clears throat> and only the standard C library converts from uh, UTC into um, the local time. And you can either specify this somewhat lengthy syntax here, the time zone uh, rules for your current locale. So for example, <clears throat> here we say that the normal time zone is in Britain called GMT and that has an offset to universal time of zero hours. But there is also British summer time, which has an offset of minus one hour. And <clears throat> the change between those two happens on the last Sunday. Zero stands for Sunday. Five is week five. This is the last Sunday in the month of March at one o'clock local time and summer time ends on the uh, last Sunday in October at two o'clock local time. So the entire rules how <clears throat> local time changes during the year can be encoded like this. As an alternative, you can also specify the name of a set of time zone rules. Um, and the there's a internationally maintained database that is known as the Olson TZ database after David Arthur Olson, who started this project. Um, and you can just say, I want the from the Olson database, the local time rules from uh, America slash uh, New York, and then you get uh, US East Coast time. If you refer to the Olson time zone database, then you have access to also historic uh, summertime daylight saving times rules back to the 
1970s. Um, in the environment variable home, when you log in, the login process will deposit your home directory, so you can easily refer to your home directory as either $home or the same value in uh, the shell is also available as just the tilde during tilde expansion as we said. Both username and log name contain the name that you logged in with on a university machine, usually your CRS ID. Um, <clears throat> The previous working directory is stored in old PWD, which stands for print working directory, um, or path of working directory, you can also remember it. That is also in Bash available as tilde minus. So if you change to a new directory and you thought, oh, this was by mistake, or I want to go back, you can just uh, CD into tilde minus and you are back. Another way is uh, instead of cd, there's a command called pushd, which changes to a new directory, but pushes the current directory onto a stack. And then with popd, you can return to any of the previous directories that you left on the stack. If you want to <clears throat> customize the behavior of your shell, one of the many things that you can customize is what your prompt looks like. The prompt is the... Uh, character sequence that the shell outputs in order to signal that it uh, expects input from you. And that's traditionally a dollar sign if you are a normal user. If you switch into a super user mode as a system administrator, the dollar sign will get replaced by a number sign. Uh, but you can put lots more information into uh, the prompt and it can be quite convenient for example, to list uh, who you are, if you have several user IDs, on what machine you are, what the name of the current directory is, um, a sequence number, there's a history mechanism where you can refer to previously entered commands. And if you can quickly see where in the history that command will be uh, saved, that can be useful. <clears throat> I also quite like uh, to uh, visually distinguish uh, my prompt. So I make, I configure my own prompts to be in the inverse because if I type a command and then it outputs a number of lines, uh, having a visual delimiter, uh, as a visual delimiter, this inverted prompt at the start and at the end of the output every, of every program very quickly allows my eyes to recognize where did the output start and, and where does it end. So a, <clears throat> to achieve, for example, this type of prompt, uh, I first use the, um, the, the escape sequence that I mentioned before to switch to inverse mode. So uh, after a backslash, if you start with the letter uh, zero, then in octal numbers, you can type arbitrary bytes. So in octal numbers, backslash 033 is the escape key and I mentioned already escape uh, square bracket 7m switches to inverse mode. Now <clears throat> because the shell has a line editor that allows you to move around with the cursor in the current line, the shell needs to know where the cursor is and to know where the cursor is it needs to know how long the prompt is because it needs to add the length of the prompt to the cover to the current cursor position to end up with the terminal column where it is. And therefore, if you add here any non-printing command sequences to the shell, you need to indicate them. And this is what the backslash uh, open square bracket and backslash closed square bracket are about. Uh, this means that whatever is between them don't actually advance the cursor in any way. <clears throat> and then there are lots of other special sequences understood in this uh, prompt string. Um, for example, backslash u will be substituted by the username, backslash h by the host name, backslash capital w by the last path component of the current working directory. Um, then this here just outputs a space, backslash exclamation mark, the number in the history that's being recorded, so the command sequence number and 
backslash dollar sign gives me either a dollar sign or if I'm the super user, a number sign. This is the default prompt value. And here again, I terminate the inverse mode. If you are using a <coughs> centrally managed machines with a print connected to a print server that uh, may um, be able to reach many printers in a building, then uh, many applications that call the printer uh, or for example these command line tools for printing something, checking the printer queue or removing something from the printer queue need to know uh, which printer you want to use and if there's one obvious one, for example the one in your office or near your office, then you just set the environment variable printer and then you get that default printer. Less important these days is to tell applications what terminal or terminal emulator you're using because they are generally all the same, the, VT, the emulator VT100 terminal or they use the Xterm, which is one popular terminal emulator that may have some extensions beyond the VT100 terminal. Some <coughs> command line tools, for example, some of the version control tools that we discuss later um, may occasionally call an editor in order to allow you to edit a message that will be stored uh, somewhere or a configuration file or they want to display some long output and want you to uh, call a paging tool such as less or more that allows you to scroll up and down in the text or do text search or do some more advanced operations. And in order to allow you a free choice of which editor or pager you want to use, there are these two environment variables, pager and editor. I know personally, for example, set pager equals uh, less and editor equals Emacs, but you may have other preferences. People usually get used to the first editor they use and then rarely change afterwards. If you're using a GUI application, then the application needs to know how to contact the X server and there is an environment variable display that tells it how to reach the X server such that the GUI application can get control over the keyboard, can open a window, can download resources such as fonts from the X server. Uh, the, so if if display isn't set, that normally means uh, you can't actually start up a GUI application. You can only start up terminal applications. And the syntax of display is uh, a host name, a colon, and then the number of the X server on that host, and then a dot. And each X server can actually serve multiple displays. For example, if you have multiple screens in front of you, so after the dot, um, you will uh, you can specify which screen of, of which server. The default value is usually colon 0, .0. That just means on the local host, the first screen of the first uh, server. The server number translates then usually into a TCP port. It just gets added to the number 6000 and that's the TCP port where the server can be contacted. Um, <clears throat> another more detailed description of common environment variables you can find in section 7 of the manual in the environment page. <laughs>